If you're looking for an alternative to lotion or oil and something that has a little more grip, head over to the rebelmassage.com shop for your professional grade deep tissue body butter. And for a limited time only, get your hands on some fall spicy body workers brew available in both grip and melt. Today I'm going to walk you through a couple of stretches that you can implement into your routine with a client on the table, especially geared towards runners, but obviously any athlete will probably appreciate this work. So I'm using my right hand at the bottom of her foot and using my left hand to support the knee and pushing her knee up towards her chest and asking her to let go of her hip. This is a great basic stretch for the hamstrings, the glutes, and the deep six, and always a great way to start. From this angle, I can also guide the hip into external rotation. I'm using my left hand here to support and stabilize her knee while using my right hand to lever her ankle towards me, which is really gonna stretch the adductors while still giving some length to the posterior hip muscles, but you can position the leg anywhere you want, closer to the chest, out laterally, in medially, and achieve a little bit of a different stretch with each repositioning. I've brought my client's left leg across her right leg towards me, and I'm gonna spend a little extra time into the IT band because this is the thing that most runners want stretched the most. I'm starting by stabilizing her knee with my left hand and using my right hand to create a lot of friction. So if you watch my video on how to work with runner's legs, and I'll include that link in the description below, I talked a lot about the benefits of friction with connective tissue, and the IT band is the epitome of where you will find incredibly thick connective tissue in the body. If you notice, I switched her leg position to brace her leg more firmly with my left hand, and I'm using my right hand, either a soft fist or a palm, to create a lot of friction over the knee and into the IT band. As an extension of the glute max and the TFL, the IT band is a tendon that comes down and inserts into the lateral knee, underneath the knee, actually into the tibia. But it also inserts along the posterior aspect of the femur, kind of sliding underneath the hamstrings. So one of the things I want to do is take advantage of this position and create a lot of release of adhesions and tension along the posterior IT band as it slides around the vastus lateralis and attaches into the linea aspera of the femur underneath the hamstrings. And what this does is allow for a little more freedom of movement between the hamstrings and the quads, and then ultimately up into the muscles that create the IT band, like I said before, the glute max and the TFL. Most people don't realize that the IT band is structured in a way to act a lot like the bow part of a bow and arrow. So as it holds tension, it does help release the hip into movement, especially with runners. So we want that tension, but we don't want those adhesions. We want those muscles to move freely, and this is the kind of work that's gonna help that happen. Once the IT band is warmed up, it's gonna offer a little slack into those two muscles that form that tendon. So this is the perfect moment to start sinking into the glute max and the TFL. Just to emphasize some proper body mechanics, I'm using my right elbow to anchor down her leg and her knee so that I can manipulate what the hip does, whether or not I want these muscles to be softened or lengthened while I'm sinking in. So I'm using my fingers to wrap around the greater trochanter and applying a lot of compression and movement into the glute max and then the deeper lateral rotators which are the muscles that are most commonly holding and guarding for runners. I'm repositioning again. I'm going to slide my right arm underneath her left knee, and I'm doing this for my own body mechanics and to gain more leverage, but I also want to talk about the fact that none of this work is really quote unquote stretching the IT band, and this is a stretching video. But it's important to know that the IT band is almost impossible to stretch, so creating friction and opening up the two muscles that form this tendon is going to be your best bet for anybody who's suffering from IT band pain, IT band syndrome, knee and hip issues because the IT band is not functioning well. This next technique is all about bringing balance to the hips, and it's a little bit complicated, so I'm gonna show it to you from a couple of different angles, but you wanna start by bringing your arm that's closest to their head underneath their knee that is closest to you, and then your other arm, which is closer to their feet, underneath their leg, which is farthest from you. So in this scenario, my left arm is under her right knee, and my right arm is under her left knee. And when you switch sides, you're gonna switch positions, but I wanna be able to show this to you you clearly on film. So again, from a different angle, what I'm doing is bracing my arms underneath her knees so that she can push down with her right leg and pull up with her left leg at the same time against my resistance. And then when she releases, I'm going to rock her hips out in both directions, drawing circles with her knees essentially. And this brings balance to the agonist and antagonist muscles of each side of the hip. So when you do this, you're focusing on the connection from the anterior right hip to the posterior left hip and then vice versa from the anterior left hip to the posterior right hip. 
bringing my attention down to the shin, I want to focus a little extra time into the tibialis anterior and the muscles in the front of the lower leg because they are really difficult to stretch. So I'm grasping her ankle as I press her feet and her toes down into plantar flexion. And I'm doing this because I want to guide her ankle and not let it catch onto the table and make sure that this joint is moving fluidly. I'm pushing her foot out laterally and in medially a little bit while I'm performing these stretches because these muscles don't perform in an isolated way and making sure that they're communicating with each other, shaking them out and jostling everything back into place is going to settle these muscles back into normalcy, which is a lot of what you want to do in a stretching session. I've got my client face down and I'm going to do a little multitasking. So I've brought my client's heel to her hips and I'm stretching out the quads, but as I do this, I'm using a soft fist with my right hand into the glutes. I'm stabilizing the hips with this move and as I lever her lower leg and bring her heel to her hips in different positions, I'm targeting different aspects of the quads. So with her heel more medial, I'm targeting the vastus lateralis and with her heel more lateral, I'm targeting the vastus medialis and all the variations of fibers in between. This move is typically used to address the piriformis, but I'm switching things up a little bit and sliding my right hand out laterally onto the posterior fibers of the glute medius so that I'm creating a pin and stretch for the lateral hip. Lift her leg up from the ankle, swing her knee like a pendulum, and apply a little traction as you lay her leg straight again. But don't leave her leg straight for long because it's time to stretch the calves. I've got my fingers hooked into the bottom of her foot, which is where the peroneals and the tibialis anterior and posterior attach. So as I'm pulling into dorsiflexion, I'm also inverting and everting, addressing a good chunk of the muscles of the lower leg and helping them to coordinate together. Keeping the knee flexed, I want to offer a little traction, pulling the femur away from the acetabulum, giving them a little space from each other. And then with the knee in a slightly more straightened position than it was before, offer some more dorsiflexion, adjusting the gastrox a little bit more because they cross the knee and with the knee straightened, they're a little bit longer. So you're just getting more detail with the stretch. Finally, I've got my client in side lying. I've hooked my hip into her sacrum and I've got my right hand on her knee, my left hand on her ankle. And all I'm doing is rotating my spine so that her leg pulls back towards me, opening up those hip flexors and stretching out those quads. If I bend her knee a little bit more, that quad stretch is gonna be even more emphasized, but you wanna make sure to stabilize her sacrum down towards her feet so that her low back has space and that front of the hip can open up really well. You can also add a little extra compression into the hip with your right hand if your client's leg isn't too heavy. But if you're having a hard time holding their leg, you can always let their leg drop down and do the work itself from this position. Keep your own hip there so your client doesn't fall off the table and let gravity do most of the work. All you're doing here is compressing into the hip and encouraging these tissues to let go. Give your client permission to enjoy the length that she's got now through her knee, up through her hip, and all the way up through her back as you traction through and lay her leg back down on the table. Hey guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want to see more videos like these, consider heading over to my Patreon page. I could not do any of this work without the support I get from my patrons. And I love bringing this content to YouTube. So thank you again to everybody over on Patreon and I will see you next time.